Welcome everybody, I'm Dark Hour 717 and today we have completed IAE 2951. Closing the doors on Tobin Expo Hall until they reopen at Invictus Week 2952. As a whole, the event, which is the largest free fly and sales event in the Star Citizen universe, went off pretty much without a hitch. Though we had to deal with a couple of the usual bugs overall, it was very, very successful. Of course, it has propelled CIG to over $410 million in crowdfunding and marked the entry point for many new citizens. This highly anticipated yearly event marks also the entry point for new content, new concepts, and even new straight-to-flyable ships. I'd honestly say that this year was by no means a disappointment in any way whatsoever for me. The gameplay was smooth, the expo hall was nicely laid out, and new content was in no short supply. As we go through and cover what we experienced, I can truly say I'm already looking forward to next year's event and all that the next year will bring to us here in the Star Citizen universe. The event itself allowed us to get a look at many classic ships from all manufacturers as well as fly any of the in-game ships at will with the free rentals available for everybody. Even newer ships such as the Origin 400i and also the Straight to Flyables. As the event always allows, ship pledges were open on all ships. This includes the whole limited ones as well, such as the Pioneer, the Idris, and even the Javelin. Once again, there were also special packages made available for those in concierge that offered an entire manufacturer's lineup for a reduced pledge cost. Much like the destruction of Alderaan, the world was filled with the screams of millions of wallets crying out in pain as citizens pledged and upgraded ships through many CCUs, trying to take advantage of all the war bonds that were available. So much so, that many even turned to Chrome extensions that would map the least expensive route to the ships that they wanted and desired. Though the pain escalated as we saw price increases on a number of ships including the Banu Merchantman, the Hull series, the Hercules A2, and even the Drake Caterpillar to name a few. We witnessed the fact that blue is a great color in moderation and not so pretty when it is drowning the walls of an event center. But through it all we learned of new straight to persistent universe vehicles, the Anvil Spartan and Armored APC troop transport with speed and toughness, as well as the Argo Raft, a small transport cargo ship that is fortified with armor and just the right size for an entry-level trader. We were witness to the release of previously concepted ships. Right after a Star Citizen Live in which the flight combat team declared a goal of ending the meta-style ship, we were given the Aegis Redeemer and the Ares Starfighter Ion and Inferno. Three ships that really make a pilot yell. I am the greatest. I am the greatest. I am the greatest. Especially the Ares Ion Starfighter, which has the ability to take out even an Idris solo. These new highly anticipated ships are sure to be new favorites for multi-crew and solo bounty hunters. We also learned that Argo has now joined the list of ships that are out to kill its pilots. Misk and their deadly ladders and various ramps are joined by the murderous elevators of the Mole and Raft. We also witnessed that even in the Expo Center, no one is safe from a ramp being left down and triggering collision. Along with all the new ships, we have also seen an influx of new available paints for many of the older ships as well as the new, realizing that the Stormbringer paint looks absolutely amazing on a hammerhead. Everyone was able to revel in the best in show rewards with the deep blue paints and flight jackets and the Ship Showdown Argo backpack, which unfortunately was not a small MPUV you could wear on your back. Amazing looking new armors have come into the game in the Hurston Security Artemex armor, available for in-game purchase at PO and also at Tammany and Sons out on Lorville, or even pledgeable for those that don't want to take out a security officer to loot it. Along with the Artemex, we also have pledgeable RRS armor as well. All these armors are also available in a pack with their matching sniper rifles, the P6LR. A new exploration ship was introduced in the Misk Odyssey. Though many questions are being asked, we should know more as it's going to be spotlight on Inside Star Citizen this week and a full Q&A is currently in the works. It's featuring a larger hangar that can fit an extra small size ship, a tier 2 medical bed, 3 dual size 5 guns, and 4 missile racks with a size 4 shield system as well. And to top that all off, it also has a built-in refinery that can provide quantum fuel for its own tanks and this really looks like it's going to be an alternative to the Anvil Carrick when it arrives. Many questions do remain though on the ability of the new ship, especially details on its refinery, and I'm hoping we'll not have to wait too long before we get the answers that we're looking for. The much-loved Whitley's Guide, though, was toned down to just four episodes. 
We were able to witness Jax McCleary realize his mojo is faltering after repeating a stunt with the Anvil Spartan, and he really begins to question his creativity. Progressing through a failed painting attempt, we saw Jimmy try to break Jax out of his slump, going so far as endangering himself, only to have Jax snap out of it long enough to save his dear friend. And then to realize that even he, in an unknown way, was a major inspiration to a quiet little boy who started with only a racing helmet and a dream. We last see Jax as he borrows a Misk Odyssey and see him departing for the pyro system through a jump gate on a sabbatical as he works to regain the drive he once had. Is this a sign or a clue as to what we could possibly see next year? Are we going to see an IAE in Pyro? It's hard to say for sure. In a lawless system, how successful would a ship manufacturer convention be? We do know that the Odyssey has hit the roadmap in the progress tracker with an anticipated time of 55 weeks from last April, so this is going to really be something we need to keep our eye on. In all, I would say we had a very successful IAE this year and one of the smoothest that I've participated in. We laughed, we cried, mostly from watching bank accounts drain, and we died in only the ways that the Star Citizen universe could do at the most unexpected times. It really was a great time though, and I'm glad I got to experience it with the crew of Amarok's Fang. I hope you enjoyed the recap and that everyone was able to enjoy the IAE as much as I did, and that everybody was able to get a hold of the ships that they were most going after. Do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button and follow over on Twitch where you can catch our gameplay stream every Wednesday and Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time and catch our weekly podcast State of the Verse Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. where we're going to go over the latest information on the Star Citizen universe. Don't forget to get your entries in for our final ship giveaway of the year where we're going to be awarding an Argo Raft to one lucky winner. Just subscribe and comment on any video here on YouTube or follow over on Twitch. You can get an entry for each one of those that you do and we will be awarding the raft on December 15th. Also, if you would like to support the channel, check out the Patreon, the merch store, or hit that join button at the top, and you can become a member for as little as 99 cents per month. I want to say again, thank you to everybody for all the support and checking out the channel. And leave me a comment. Let me know what your time at IAE was like, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we will catch you next time.